That's incredible, isn't it? No. How many years old do you reckon that is? 40, 40, 50? About 50. 50. 50 years old. You can make a really nice chopping board as well. That'd be amazing. Like in the kitchen. It? Yeah. Just the slice like With that. With a live edge to it. Yeah. That literally is one of the cleanest cuts you could probably get. I know. Like that's like it's been sanded down like sandpaper. Totally. It's so smooth. You can barely see the ridges of the saw. That's look, awesome. Look how dense that growth is. The later it well, the older it yeah. gets, the more dense these rings become. Yeah. Fast growing and then sort of stops and Yeah, rapid until about there. Yeah. And then the last maybe 20 to 20 years. It's amazing. Look at yeah. that knot there as well.
Welcome to another episode of Tea Outdoors, or maybe another series. I'm back in the woods with Dustin in this really nice, dense cedar forest, and it is the beginning of a new build. You saw us pretty much this time last year build the big Viking house with a bark roof. We've also built a Saxon house on the channel and a kind of turf roof Viking house series, which I'm halfway through at the moment, and there'll be more videos coming up on that. But we are here and we are building a brand new structure. This is amateur building at its best. It's kind of experimental archeology. span And for this series, we're gonna be trying to build, emphasis on trying, a Celtic roundhouse. Now the Celts occupied Britain round about 500 BC. We don't know for sure. And history wasn't as well documented back then as it is now. Now you guys know me on the channel. I'm really into the historic builds, especially over the past year. So in Britain, we have a lot of history. We've had a lot of different cultures and tribes that occupied our country, well, countries. And we've had the Vikings, and then before that, we had the Saxons. Before that, we had the Romans. But before the Romans were here, we had the Celts. Now, the Celts occupied a large area of Europe, and eventually they started to spread northwards into Britain, getting smoked out here. They were, again, very, very resourceful people. And they actually built their settlements on hills. Over here, they're known as hill forts or Iron Age hill forts. And they, during the Iron Age, they helped to build different tools and different weapons using iron. They were one of the first kind of cultures or tribes to do it. So they are pre-Roman era. So it's going back a very, very long time. And it's a really interesting period. And they're actually a very interesting tribe, culture, whatever you want to, uh, to call them. And what they traditionally built with their houses was a roundhouse structure. So it's round. Uh, during, up in the north of England, it tends to be made with stone walls and then thatch. Uh, but down here in the south of England, where there was a lot more woodland, we, well, they built it out of wattle and daub, which you've seen previously on the channel. Uh, and again with a thatch roof. So we're gonna be trying to do that, replicate that as best as possible. It's not gonna be historically accurate. We don't really know what historically accurate is because it was so long ago. As with TA Outdoors, we're gonna be putting our own twist on it. It's gonna be a really fun series. Uh, I'll teach you a little bit more and tell you a bit more info about the Celts along the way throughout the series. But be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm here with Dustin. He's gonna be documenting his adventures as well on his YouTube channel, Bushcraft Tools. There will be loads of links in the description for you guys. We are in episode one. We're about to start the foundations, but first we need to get all the resources ready. So come and join us on this adventure. So to begin with, we've actually refurbished the sawhorse, which you guys may have seen in the Viking House series. I'll put a link up in the top or in the description below. It wasn't a great sawhorse previously. It was actually a full round log, which meant that logs that we were sawing just rolled off or tended to just roll into these support these notches here these support notches so we've split that log in half because we're going to be doing a lot of sawing in this series uh, and we've reinforced the legs a little bit better done the legs better and it's just in generally in general going to be a better sawhorse to use we may need to build another similar thing but we're not sure yet over here we have been collecting resources so we have the foundation poles here, these are the posts that we need to take the bark off and then burn the ends because these are going to be the first point of contact in the ground. Then we have some longer ones here which Dustin collected earlier. These are going to act as the rafters. That will be possibly episode two or three, we're not sure yet. But we, this episode is all about resource collection. Here is the site that we will be building it. We're not up on a hill, we're not going to be building an Iron Age hill fort we are going to be building a roundhouse and we found this nice clearing here that is absolutely ideal for a round structure and we've got a bit of headroom up there as well so that we can uh, get the roof up without any trees coming down as you can see it's a dense cedar forest with some other uh, deciduous trees over here as well bit of beech bit of hazel um, but it's mostly pretty much cedar for those wondering the site that we're at, you may recognize the Native American wigwam or wigwam over there. I'll put a link to that series if you'd like to see that in the description below. And we have Dustin's double lean to here. Essentially, we're creating our own little community or village. And um, yeah, it's going to be good. Uh, we need to crack on with a bit more work. We're not sure how many episodes there's going to be in this series because we, again, we don't really know what we're doing. We're just cracking on like we do on TA Outdoors. We're just building what we can 
and um, seeing where we end up. What do you, how do you think it's going to go, Dustin? I think I'm really excited for this project. Yeah. You know, and oh, we got Amber with us as well, by the way. Of course we do. Uh, yeah, the Viking house was epic. I think this one, I'm, I'm a bit more excited for this one than the Viking, and the Viking yeah. house is brilliant. But this one... We're a bit more prepared for this one, aren't we? We are, yeah. And the roof as well. This is going to be a good roof. Yeah. We don't have to peel bark for this one. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty painful. <laughs> but we're going to have some feasts along the way, right? We certainly are. Not in this episode, but no. maybe the next one. Or maybe episode three. We'll see. So make sure you get your bacon sandwiches ready because there's <laughs> going to be a feast at some point. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching. Let's crack on with some work and uh, we'll see what we can get done for the rest of the day. So we're not actually using the sawhorse for its intended purpose, which is sawing. Um, we're just, we've used it as a makeshift shaving horse, really, or just a, a bark peeling jig. Just by using these supports here, which would normally help for when you're sawing a log, hello Amber, sawing a log here, we've just butted the end of the log up against this so that Dustin can twist it at one end. And then I can, as I pull that draw knife, all that weight's just gonna go into this peg and otherwise it's just the log's going to keep sliding towards me all the time so that that peg is just acting as like a stock peg really it does mean that i can sort of peel it and if dustin needs to go off and do other things then he can so we get a bit more work done at the same time but i'm only taking the very top layer of bark off i'm not going any deeper so it doesn't matter that there's that pink yellow layer below it, the sort of cambium layer, that doesn't matter that that's left on because the reason we're peeling the bark is this, this is going to go under the ground. Well, uh, certainly a chunk of this is going to go underground. We're going to char it as well. By peeling the bark off, I've said this before, it helps to prevent bugs which eat away at the, the, the wood and feed on the wood underneath the bark. Uh, it also then is exposed to the elements because we peeled the bark, so we char the ends of it and that helps to make it a bit more rot resistant when it's in the ground. So we're doing this to all of the vertical upright posts and we have 14 of them overall. Just using my back a bit more on this one. I used to just use my arms, but I found it's easier. Use your back and just pull nice long strokes.
Uh, Dustin, what on earth is this absolute beast of a sword? This is my, <laughs> my Celtic battle weapon. Yeah. It's a bit of a modern aged uh, saw, but it's huge. it is an absolute beast. Undo that the... safety lock. What you don't want to do is get your fingers trapped no. in this. How big is that saw, the blade? It's Look at it. one meter long. What? I've got the 500, you've got one as well, haven't you? The half that I do. But that, I thought that was big, but look at the size of that saw. That <laughs> is ridiculous. And we use that to chop a really big log. And actually that could take down a massive tree, that thing. Exactly, I mean, we Unbelievable. took down, we cut through that thing over there and it's got to be like 60 centimeters Easy, diameter. Easy, yeah, big Absolute one. Absolute beast. Awesome saws, man, they're really good. And they cut on the pull, don't on they? On the pull, really good. Yeah. Also referring to the tools that we're using, obviously the Celts way back then wouldn't have had saws like this. Most of it would have been done with axes probably and smaller hand tools, but we're just going with what we've got uh, just to make our lives a little bit easier. Um, and also by cutting the logs with a saw, we get a nice flat base to them so that they're rigid in the ground. So we are wrapping it up for episode one of the Celtic Roundhouse. What we've done so far, we've got ourselves some vertical posts of around about 14, I think 13, 14. We've taken the bark off them. We've burnt the ends. Literally just now, we've put some small sticks in the ground and used some rope just to get an idea of the scale of the base, basically the foundation of the shelter itself. Uh, and, and you probably can't see it too much on the camera, but that's roughly the scale that we're going for. We may go a little bit wider because we've got the space, but we've also got loads of trees around here, which means that it's going to be quite rooty and we don't know how many roots are going to get in the way when we're digging down with a spade. Uh, we fixed the sawhorse. We also got ourselves a big chopping block, which we were using at the beginning. And um, yeah, it's just, it's been a bit manic really. It's been a bit all over the place, but the main build will start in the next episode. That is when we will begin to put the structure together and we'll have some epic feasts as well, hopefully. Cook up some good food. Hopefully the weather will be good as well. It's been fairly overcast, a bit windy as well. But um, yeah, thanks so much for joining us on this adventure, guys. All the links are in the description below and we'll see you soon in the next episode of the Celtic Roundhouse.